Good evening, Stats fans, and welcome to Stat Center, presented by the Michelson 20MM Foundation. I'm Robert Adut from yaymath.org. Tonight, a terrifying exclusive. The number of Americans playing basketball is small. Really, really small. I'd be out there myself, hitting threes on the front lines to protect and preserve the game I love. But the Stat Center producers preferred that I remain here to serve as the voice of calm and reason during this time of crisis. For such coverage, we turn to infield reporter whose N1 nickname is Ball Master Flex, Jordan Cohen, covering this outrageous story in the trenches as it unfolds. Jordan, these are indeed dark times. Robert, judging from this idyllic setting, you wouldn't suspect that there was a basketball shortage in America, but I assure you it does exist. We know it to be true for one undeniable reason, an undeniably accurate statistical survey of the entire United States population. The effort must have been exhausting, Jordan. Polling every single American? That would be impossible, Robert. Imagine the time, energy, and money it would take to ask everyone in the country about whether they play basketball. But surely, anything for the love of the game. Even with unlimited resources, the most effective way to learn the number of Americans playing basketball is to sample the population. That is, to use a group of people from the entire population with the same general characteristics as the population in its entirety. You're telling me that we can get an accurate representation of the number of people playing basketball in America without having to poll everybody? That's what I'm saying, and that's what we did. A simple random sample, or SRS, is the most basic form of sampling. To do this, we look at the population we're interested in and randomly select our sample from the entire group, with everyone in the group just as likely to be picked. What are we waiting for? Let's do some SRS sampling right now. Go ahead and poll some of those brave people playing right behind you. That I cannot do. Remember, for our purposes, we're looking to sample the entire United States population. If we conveniently began sampling people in this park, which is actually called convenience sampling, not every person in the United States would have a chance of being selected, making our sampling technique incorrect. Unfortunate. Another method we could use is stratified sampling, where we first separate the population into groups called strata, and then sample an equal amount of people from each group. So for us, this could involve first separating the U.S. population by state, then sampling an equal amount of people from each state? Exactly. Stratified sampling could be very helpful in our case, especially if we thought there might be noticeable differences between the population of states. For instance, perhaps states with colder weather might have fewer people playing basketball. That's what indoor gyms are for, people. Any other forms of sampling we should know about, Jordan? Yes, cluster sampling. In this case, we first separate the population into groups, then randomly select a subset of those groups. You lost me after subset. After we select our groups, we simply observe everyone in the groups. Let me see if I get this. Suppose we created groups of 10 people in each state. For cluster sampling, we'd randomly select, let's say, five states and use all 10 people from each group? That would do the trick. For cluster sampling, we want each group to have equal chance of being selected so that hopefully, together, they'll accurately represent the entire population. Okay, Jordan, really quick so I don't lose my job here. I've been told that when we sample, we also need to take into account whether we do it with replacement or without replacement. What in the world is that about, ball master flex? Very simple, Robert. With replacement means, we're putting our observation back into the general pool after we sample it. Well, without replacement means, we don't put it back. If, say, we're sampling 50 people from a population of 1,000, when sampling with replacement, we would select a person, record his or her responses, then put that person back into the pool so that every time we would be selecting from a pool of 1,000 people. I take it that without replacement sampling would involve randomly selecting a person from a pool of 1,000 people, then selecting another person from the remaining 999, then another from the remaining 998, and so on? You got it. It goes without saying that deciding whether to replace observations has an effect on the overall results. Overall, our goal, no matter what sampling technique we choose, is to allow the sample to represent the population. And in a grim showing, it turns out that a meager 1 in 12 Americans, or about 8% of the population, plays basketball. What can be done to curb this nightmare? Only by keeping the game alive in our hearts, our minds, and on our courts will the game press on. <sighs> Finer words have never been spoken, Jordan. I wish the circumstances were better, but it is always a pleasure. 
Keep fighting the good fight with your thorough and exceptionally well-dressed reporting. Thank you, Robert. We've covered several ways samples can represent a population tonight. In a simple random sample, or SRS, everyone from the entire population has an equal chance of being selected. In stratified sampling, we divide the population into different groups and select an equal number of people from every group. In cluster sampling, we divide the population into different groups, then randomly select a few groups, surveying everyone in those few groups. We can only hope that in the future, sampling will show the percentage of Americans playing basketball to be on the rise again. But only time will tell. This is Robert Adut with Stat Center. Good night and good luck. What up? <laughs>